now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. starting another week of this insanity. Why I keep doing it, I have no idea. Uh, but I guess it's uh, just so that um, I guess uh, this guy uh, could have, um, let's see here, could have a, uh, uh, well, I don't know, some place to, to talk or uh, he'd be out. Uh, what do you got? What do you got your mask on for? It's good enough for Joe Biden. It's good enough for me. No, it's not good enough to Joe Biden anymore. He's said you don't have to wear it anymore yeah but he was on a zoom call with uh 16 other uh dignitaries from around the world and he wore his that mask was last week oh that was so last today week. he gave a speech saying that we feel that if you've been inoculated you don't have to uh you don't have to go get the uh you don't have to uh wear a mask OK, in certain uh, and uh, under most circumstances where you're outdoors and walking around and doing things like that. Yeah. OK. So I, is he afraid of the insurrection? And when he got is through that... talking. Yeah. Uh, he left without his mask on. That was kind of uh, his way of saying, come on, gang. I can... think he just had a cognitive loss and, and forgot to put it back on. When are you going to admit that this guy has been doing more about COVID than your little piece of crap Trump ever did. Uh, you mean the guy that uh, had that Operation uh, Warp Speed and brought no, no, this... That uh, operation that was called a brain bypass. Uh, warp uh, Speed. Oh, Warp Speed, yeah. Uh, what happened under Warp Speed? Uh, we, got a, we got a vaccine in, in a year. No, he, we were going to get a vaccine anyway because these people were all rushing because they saw the bucks in it. In 10 years. Huh? But let me ask you this. I mean in 10 years. That's uh, how okay, long it normally okay. takes. Once we got the vaccine, okay, mm -hmm. do you think Trump would have gotten it out there this fast? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, come on, Phil. Come on. You're a smart guy. Yeah, well, you know, I think that there was a lot of people that wanted to delay it, that wanted it to fail under Trump. They still don't even give him credit for developing. This uh, is a guy uh, who for his entire term kept saying, oh, this is just something that will just go away. Don't worry about it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't uh, give it any cause to bother you. And by the way, I'm not wearing a mask. You don't really need to wear a mask. That well, killed that killed over five hundred thousand people. I, I, I'm I'm a little concerned that you're not wearing your mask. You know, you're you're putting me at risk. <laughs> well, how was your week? Sucked. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for my mask. I can't find it right now. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a mask around here somewhere. Your friend Stephen Pearl. Mm -hmm. Should have gotten an Oscar for his TV commercial. Did you see it? Did I see it? You Does everybody else want to see it? Yeah, yeah, I want to okay, see it. He was I, great. I, I was going to play this tomorrow night when I'm having him on, but I can, I can, uh, I can yeah, actually. Yeah, give us a preview. Let's play it. Uh, let's play it now. Imagine this happens to you. You're driving along and someone causes you to be in an accident. Come on, walk and talk with me. Have you had a slip and fall injury? A dog bite? Uh, ow, ow, I'm not the mailman. Have a debilitating head or spinal injury? Or God forbid, a family member suffers a wrongful death? And now you're stuck with these injuries and damages, dealing with the insurance agents and the attorneys getting nowhere? But sir, the accident wasn't even my fault. Good luck proving it, sweetheart. We're paying you nothing, not a bumpkiss. <laughs> You need someone on your side. You need a David to fight your Goliath. All you got to do is dial. You ready? Call 830-7070. 
Anthony Paglia, injury lawyer. Uh oh. Call 830-7070. Okay, there it is. I, I probably I, I, I you know I, that was great. I actually didn't uh, I didn't uh, put that properly. I didn't put it together properly. I have to do it tomorrow. Uh, oh, okay. It was it was a little off uh, off center. But there. you know you got his uh, uh, his award winning performance. Talking about award winning. Yeah. What, what did you think of the uh, the Oscar ceremony, which I missed? Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. By the way, that picture was off. I didn't I didn't frame it right. So I'm sorry, but you got to All see right. it anyway. Yeah. I'll play well, it again tomorrow night. You're not going to get anything. You're going to get bupkis. I, I love that. That that was fabulous. Yeah. Let me he had the it. best line. Why can't I put, uh, I, uh, while you're talking, yeah, what were you, you were going to talk about the, uh, about the. Well, uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah. Now, I didn't watch them. I didn't even know that they had occurred. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess there was, uh, was it Tyler Perry that was talking about hate? And he mentioned not. Wait a minute! Hold on a second. Imagine. Oh, it's starting again. You're driving hold on along a second. And someone causes you to be. Oh, let's just stop Come it. On. Just stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Can Can you, uh, uh, by the way, take his line and loop it so it, it just keeps coming around? You're not going to get anything. You're going to get bupkis. <laughs> you like that, <laughs> I mean, that? Huh? That would be a good one. You like that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I just uh, I just wanted to. Uh, make sure I got it right here. Hold on a second. Let me just do something here. I I don't know. I I, I don't have anything better to do than this kind of stuff. Uh, let me see here. Da, da, da. And there we go. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, uh, that's ready for tomorrow night then. Yeah. So there's two two things uh, that uh, supposedly occurred uh, during these uh, things. One is uh, was it Tyler Perry that was saying he was getting a, a, a unbelievable applause when he was saying you can't hate the, the hate against Asians mm -hmm. and and blacks and so forth. And then he said hate against the police uh, is bad. And the crowd went silent. As yeah, if that was that was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought that his speech was exceptional. And I'm not a big Tyler Perry fan, you know, uh, but he his speech was exceptional. It was. It had heart, and it had uh, solid meaning. And he said, "Come meet me in the middle," you know, basically. And it was. Uh, I think it was a great speech. But you're right. When he said "police," immediately was no. He had got applause lines for we shouldn't hate blacks, we shouldn't hate gays, blah blah blah. blah, blah. Applause, applause, and police. Dead silence. <laughs> Dead silence. Dead silence. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so, uh, you know, I, I thought that was an interesting uh, thing that the uh, the media and, uh, you know, those that are making movies and, uh, you know, are, are having to do just to stay mm -hmm. uh, relevant. Yeah. You know, they need to kowtow to the woke message. Well, he doesn't have to kowtow to anybody. No, that's why yeah. he said the police, yeah. and he got dead silence. Yeah, yeah. Now, there was also Rose McGowan. I saw her do an interview on Fox News. Now she's a lefty. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, she she had brought up uh, a, a few points as well. Did you see any of that, or uh, did you see hmm. what caused her to? No, no. I, no. I I all I know is I watched that piece of crap. I was watching yeah. Schwarzenegger was on uh, the uh, the Kimmel show, and he yeah. said, "So did you watch it?" He said for about twenty minutes, and then I realized it really stunk, <laughs> <laughs> and I turned went somewhere else. Yeah. Um, well, I understand the viewership was really low. Oh, it was it was, it was down from twenty three million last year yeah. to about nine point one million this year. So hmm. that's about sixty percent. Down. Now, uh, the sh uh, the uh, the picture, I guess they got the the best uh, best uh, picture or whatever, uh, had such a low box office uh, revenue because the theaters weren't open. Do you remember? Uh, well, to begin with, it was never shown in theaters. It was on Hulu. Oh, well, why? Oh, so why did it only have like a six million dollar um, 
uh, revenue stream. It only had a six million dollar revenue stream because it was only shown on Hulu and maybe in a few theaters here and there. Plus, wow. it's if that picture were just released to the theaters under normal conditions, it wouldn't make money. Okay. It was just not. It was not the kind of picture people want to pay money to go see. I mean, yeah. people do not want to go spend money to go see something that makes them feel miserable. <laughs> you know, um, they gabnet. Here's here's the big thing. You see, we had Steven Soderbergh was producing this, and he said, mm -hmm. "I'm going to make this look like a movie." Right? This is going to be my movie. This 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 Oscars. So he, to begin with, he cropped the screen so it was wider than usual. Okay? That's for starters. So you mean like a panorama? Well, no, what he did is, you know, your screen is wide, but you can yeah. crop the top and you can crop the bottom and you can change the ratio to wider. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he cropped the top and he cropped the bottom. All right? Then he ran it in what we call 24P, which is film speed. Okay. So that it looked more like film than it did like video. And then he decided, hey, we're going to go for real, the real drama here tonight, right? Yeah. We're going to put best picture third from the end. Since when do you do best picture third from the end? Since the very beginning of the Oscars, it has always been first, you know, the last thing of the evening, right? Yeah. Best this, best that, best picture. Right. And then uh, 8000 people swarm on stage who had to do with the film. And it's a big goodbye from everybody as everybody's cheering because the movie won. Well, Soderbergh decided that, oh, well, Chadwick Boseman is going to win for best actor. OK, so because he's going to win for best actor, let's make that the last thing we do the, uh, in the evening. And then his wife will get up and give a heartfelt thank you to the audience and so on. And they open up the envelope, and the winner is Anthony Hopkins, who isn't right. even there. He isn't even there by satellite. They've only got a still picture of him. And that's the end of the show. Wow. You know, it yeah. just fell flat. Well, yeah, I knew that Anthony Hopkins won. Yeah. Uh, but I, I didn't know that he wasn't there. He, no, he wasn't there. And they showed a, a still picture of him, uh, uh, you know, his... his Eight by ten, okay, and, and and he didn't even he wasn't even there by uh, by satellite or whatever, you know, he no wasn't there speech. at all. No acceptance speech. So the end of the show falls flat because they don't want to do best picture, which will always get you a big finish, right? And that was Steven Soderbergh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he turned uh, he turned the Oscars into one of his films, boring and overly long. And then yeah. the acceptance speeches, they told everybody, go as long as you want to. Really? Oh, it was so bo it was so dull. The whole thing was dull. No clips, no film clips for the most part, except when yeah. you got the best picture. No film clips. I mean, it was, it was, it was terrible. It was just ghastly. I understand there was no entertainment either. No, there was no entertainment. And quite frankly, can I tell you this? Usually the Oscars have a couple of good laughs in the evening. Somebody who gets up and says something that's funny. There was no humor. Absolutely no humor. It was humorless. Well, uh, didn't, they, uh, didn't they make Kevin Hart step down uh, uh, when he did it? Uh, he had had some, uh, uh, some things that he tweeted about years ago. And so if they wanted humor... They would have had him. Well, but. no, but they didn't have to do the humor that way. They, the, in the following years, they decided, let's not have a host. Let's just have a bunch of people come up and introduce stuff. And they had some well-written stuff, and there was some comedy stuff there, too, you know. So uh, it, 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 other Oscars have always had humor in them. They've had music. They didn't mm -hmm. even have that, you know. I mean, it was just, it was just the driest. Most, it was horrible. It was just, I bet they never asked Steven Soderbergh to do this again, you know. But <laughs> no. in his desire to make it look like a movie, he made the screen wider than it should be, and, and it did it at 24p. It's, it, 24p is 24 pr frames per second, as yeah. opposed to 30, uh, which is usually what uh, TV has done with today, okay? Yeah. And, and, I and never do video. Hmm? 
I never do video. I, I have a camera that's right. capable right. of it, but I've never, never, ever shot anything in video. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've shot some video in 24P, and I, I don't find it makes it look that much like film. You know? Yeah. But yeah, did you shoot it in 60 also? No. Or, no, the whole no? thing was 24P. Uh, either them, but video, is it also shot in 60? Is, is, is... is video also shot in 60? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, but 24 frames per second is the rate of film speed. And so mm -hmm. they feel that if you, uh, if you shoot in 24P, you're getting that film look. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but most, most video is 30 frames per second. You know? Yeah. Well, but it was terrible. It was just horrible. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I thought you'd enjoy that as uh, as an opening. Well, you know, I mean, I I wanted to like it. You know, I, I, it it was so boring, and these speeches were so long. At one point, I said, "I gotta go. I gotta go take a crap." So I go to the bathroom, and I come back, and the person who was giving the acceptance speech was just wrapping up. Wow, that's how <laughs> long it was. Do you get the uh, the downloads for those movies as well? You didn't you have to this year. They were all on like Hulu and Netflix. You know Netflix? Usually yeah. say, what studio got the most Oscars this year? You know which studio did? No. Netflix. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, some of the other nominations were for stuff on Amazon and stuff on Hulu. Hulu, a film on Hulu, won Best Picture. Wow. All right. So, you know, that's, that's the way I, it went. I think things are changing. You know, there's there's a movie coming out called H or something like that with uh, Jason Statham. Now, I, I like Jason Statham and I like mm -hmm. his movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to, if I want to see it, May 7th, it's coming out in the theaters. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, are people going to return to the theater for, uh, you know, for movies? Why? Because well, I'm wondering, you know, well, I what mean, you're going to have to do, what, what, what you're going to, the only kind of films that are going to survive in theaters now are going to yeah. be films that are like big, what we call tentpole pictures um, and have a, a lot of crashes and noises and, uh, you know, take full advantage of the wide screen. And maybe they show them in 3D, which you can't get at home, those kind of things. But Nomadland, nah, nah, you know. Okay. No, I get it. I get it. The art houses are closing. Okay. Yeah. That's what's what's happening. And people are very used to now after a year watching and getting their films at home. Yeah. You know? So that that's gonna be the new that's gonna be probably the new paradigm. Uh, yeah. Well, uh my T V is twenty four inches square mm -hmm. and I have to turn the selector dial right. to go between the 13 channels. Right, and you have a little tuning Wait. knob so you can get yeah. it in just right. Yeah, yeah. 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 With rabbit ears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, though. People say, well, you know, it's, they've had a hard time doing award shows this year. Yeah. And I said, no, they haven't. SAG, for instance, did, did an hour. That's all they did. They announced the pictures, they announced the winners, on to the next one, you know, and then they did it all within an hour. And if you want to see how an award show should be done, the Grammys did a beautiful job of it, you know, of making it feel like a big night and at the same time realizing you had to have that distance and so on. Yeah. So, I mean, it really was, uh, there are people who have done it right. And, no, I get it. Yeah. You know, uh, I think some things are changing in that industry. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, they're going to have to make, they're going to have to, to begin with, the whole nature of, of the kind of movies that are shown in theaters will all be of one sort. You know, they'll have to be a Marvel film, or they'll have to be a big Disney tentpole picture. Uh, the next, the first big film to come out probably, which has been waiting for about almost two years now to come out, is yeah. the latest James Bond film, which I think they have slated for you know, November or something like that. Who is James Bond now? What actor is... Uh, so, still, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, the English guy? Yeah. But, yeah, there's always an English guy. Come <laughs> on. Uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. I, I can picture him. Hmm. He, he's not real elegant. He's not the. Yeah, what the, I was going to say is they say Patrick well, something. How right? long? How, no, stop Patrick something. Uh, oh. what, what, when's he? When's he going to? You know, stop making these Bond films. And I said he probably already has because he can't do anything about it right now. If yeah. you think about it, uh, he uh, he has gotten so old waiting for this film to come out. He's going to have to play mm-hmm. James Bond in a walker. You know? <laughs> yeah. Albeit an Aston Martin walker, but, you know, yeah. a walker nonetheless. With flamethrowers. No, but it's, you know, so anyway. So, so anything in the news of floating your boat at all? Yeah. Um, yeah cops, you know. Uh, you know, what's happening is, is uh, there's been a lot of shootings lately. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, I can't get my... Uh, uh, I had I had something queued up on my phone and now mm-hmm. my phone went dead. Uh, Good. Yeah, uh, David <laughs> Peel. Uh, he's a cop. You know, uh, I, I like that song. Well, you know, I've always had a certain dislike for cops. Yeah. Okay. I know. I really have. Um, and uh, I, I think they're so just nice they're me. finally getting what they're due. You know. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, well, that's only because you were a cop. Yeah, that's because I but, saw it. I mean, the this thing, this thing that went on down in uh, what, Elizabeth, uh, North Carolina, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, They're waiting for the body cam video, and yeah, uh, I mean, um, the guy's name to begin with is very funny. The guy's name was Andrew Brown. You know who Andrew Brown was? Uh, the guy that got shot. No, Amos and Andy. Andrew. Br- oh, Andy really? Brown. Yeah. A- a- anyway. Um, uh, hey, Keith Fisher. <laughs> Andrew Andrew Brown. I mean, okay, now maybe maybe this was a drug bust and they were trying to get the guy for drugs. I don't know that's what they were claiming the thing was about. But if the guy starts driving his way in his car, pursue him. Do don't start shooting at the car and shooting him in the back and killing him. I mean, it, 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 you know, all you were going to do was arrest him for something, which he'd have to go on trial for, where he can have an attempt to prove his innocence. You've already become the judge, jury, and executioner. I guess you're going to get, uh, like in Kentucky, uh, that gal that was killed in the uh, in in the shootout uh, uh, that they've had all these protests over. She was sitting on the sofa next to her boyfriend. It was a drug dealer, and I think they were trying to serve a warrant. Brianna something Taylor oh, Taylor the Brianna yeah. Taylor situation right. yeah so uh, the uh, new attorney general uh, is going to reopen that case mm-hmm. and uh, as well they should I mean Brianna Taylor wasn't guilty of anything you know uh, and, well, and again it's I think that really police have to think twice before shooting now and what's so stupid about these guys down in Elizabeth North Carolina is they should have taken a look at what happened up in Minneapolis and gone, we got to cool it. You know, we can't just start firing our guns because we feel, oh, this guy's getting away and we can't let him get away. Is hey, that- if, if, you can't, if, if, if you let him get away, don't worry. You're going to be able to catch him later on down the road. Okay? Oh, yeah. I, I always felt that that was the case. I never ran after anyone. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I used to observe, like, the Oakland cops they were constantly getting ambushed in alleys because they were running after uh, uh, perpetrators. Mm-hmm. Well, I said, I'm, I'm going to be a good witness. I'm going to make sure I can identify this guy, mm-hmm. but I'm not running after him. Uh, first of all, I'm not fast enough, and I, I would never be able to jump the fence anymore or, or do any of those kinds of things. Listen, I, I went down to... Uh uh, to uh, tie a shoelace today, and I couldn't get down there without feeling I was going to pass out. You know, that was going to happen. Huh? That happens. Yeah. I mean, at my age, it's just you don't have the same, the, the same flexibility you once had. But here's the thing. You know, I think that uh, it's, it's time that the police, because, uh, you see, here's what happens. A guy like Andrew Brown, you can say, okay, maybe he was, a, he was guilty because he tried to get away. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, there's another reason why a black person might try to get away. It's because they're so used to always being considered guilty from the minute they're, you know, approached that it's a, it's a, a reflex that the, that uh, that black blacks have when it comes to police. 
I don't know. That that's uh, kind of no. Uh, it's not kind of. It is. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're 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 not black, and you don't live in that world. Neither do I. But I do understand it, and I do understand the fear when a policeman knocks on your door and goes, "Andrew Brown, you in there?" You know, police. If you're totally innocent of anything, you still you're you drive, should, wait a minute, and you're driving down the street, and there's a cop behind you. Do you get nervous? Yes. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah. You know, it's like, is he going to pull me over? Yeah, I was doing five miles over the speed well, limit. Did I, was I doing anything is the question, you know. Well, even if you weren't, maybe you thought you did at one time, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so it's easy to uh, to think that, you know, something's going to happen. Uh, hey, is do you think David Peel's stuff is copyrighted? Who's David? I mean, David Peel on the Lower East Side? Yes, of course it is. Yes, it is. Why? Oh, because I had it right here, and I was just yeah. going to play a, a couple of verses. But, you no, know, here no. comes a cop all dressed in blue. He's after me. He's after you. He's got a gun. He's got a knife. You better run for your life. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. Well, but I that mean, was 1968. Yeah, it's 1968. Absolutely. Yeah. And David Peel, who was maybe one of the worst musicians of all time. <laughs> well, and his friends that would gather in the East Village. Yeah, yeah. I knew David. He was he was he was cool. I liked David. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, when it came to talent, eh, eh, yeah. he was right up there with the Fugs. Hmm? The, he no, was the up Fugs, there. With- the Fugs were gr- were great, and they were great by virtue of the fact they were all poets. Yeah. And basically, it was a form of poetry they were doing. But they were good too. Lee Kupferberg and Ed Sanders, and I can't remember who the other guy was. But uh, in fact, uh, Tuli Kupferberg. Uh, I always enjoyed Thule because he was the only guy I ever knew who jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge to commit suicide, hit the water, didn't break a bone in his body. Wow. So I said, what did you do? He said, I swam to shore and went home. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when you jump from that high of a distance, uh, the water is like cement. Well, he somehow survived it and just... F- you know, swam to shore and uh, went uh, went home. You know. Wow. So, anyway, so oh, well, I have another hour to do here. Oh, yeah. I, hey, I got a fan. I'm so exhausted. Uh, what? Can you can you hear that fan in the background? Oh, that's a uh, Dyson. Yeah. Uh, it's it's comfortable. I mean, it doesn't it's on its maximum amount, and it. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you hear it? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Can you hear it? Good. I yeah. I can. And not in yeah, my but can, ear. But can you hear my? Can you hear my air purifier? No. See. So we're yeah. even. Yeah. Okay. We're even. Well, listen. I guess I gotta go to these other people and talk to them. Yeah. All right. You know. Uh, yeah. Let them enjoy themselves, and you too. But thank you so much for joining me again tonight. Oh, it's always my pleasure. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Phil Meyer. We'll see you next week, Phil. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Gonna get bupkis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're gonna get bupkis. That's right. You're gonna get bupkis. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see here. I gotta I gotta just get rid of his uh, Phil Meyer. There we go. Get rid of that. There we go. They were fine. Okay. Well, let me just bring these people in. Now, there are only a couple of them. Uh, if we don't get a lot, I'm gonna sign off early and go to sleep. You know, um, but here comes Charlie Wallace, and here comes uh, uh, Brian Neary, and there's Alan, and uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, here comes Jeffrey Stein, and here, uh, Richard Jukin. Who is Richard Jukin? Richard? Oh. Hi. Oh, oh, you're the guy from uh, Norway or wherever. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, you're too loud uh, now. You're too loud. Oh, 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 okay. Oh boy. Oh, you're always a technical. How's that? You're always a technical nightmare. How's that? No, it's still too yeah. loud. Now? No. Okay. Uh, well. Just speak softly. Yeah. Hi, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Are you there? Uh, no. I want to actually. I want. It's, I want to say something to Alex. No, it's you're too loud, and I. It's annoying, and I can't stand oh. it. 
Okay. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to say goodbye to you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Because okay. I, you know, his problem is that. Uh, 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 let's see here. Remove. Okay, and I don't want to uh, uh, remove. Uh, there we go. There we go. What do you want to say? Oh, huh? I'm kidding. I say, what do you want to say right before you leave? No, he's a, he, he's, a, he's a pain in the ass. Yeah. He looks yeah. like. It. Yeah. John yeah. John Redshaw beat me to it, but there's a difference between when Phil gets pulled over and when Charlie gets pulled over. Yes. Absolutely. They're both nervous, but he's nervous that he was speeding <clears throat> five miles an hour over the limit. And yeah. Charlie made you nervous. Yeah. Level. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I, you know, it's hard to get Phil to understand a simple fact like that. That, you know, they say, well, this guy ran because he must have been guilty. Well, no, he probably ran because he's black. Am I right about that, Charlie? Yeah. You know, it's another, but it, but it's another sad situation. And you maybe you can explain it, Alan, on um, why the cops. Uh, uh, I guess they just don't like somebody not paying attention to them. You know, they feel insulted by it, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm and they they, rep they they respond to the insult with a murder. It's interesting, you know. So I, I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean you have no idea what I'm talking about? Explain you, it. Explain well, what you want. You you asked me a question. Well, I, no, no, I was talking about Phil about my discussion with Phil about. Why some black people like uh, like uh, Andrew Brown Jr. Uh, suddenly get in their car and take off, you know, uh, when the cops come, and the, the reason isn't necessarily because they're guilty. Because in the case of black people, it's a it's a learned response. Am I right, Charlie? Well, we see a lot of people who were innocent but ended up dead anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I mean, this guy didn't, you know, he didn't have a trial. He didn't, uh, these people were acting as judge, jury, and executioner. <laughs> so, I, you know where you said maybe the cop, when you were talking to Phil, the cop could maybe take a step back and let the guy flee. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. wait a minute. I, I haven't put you guys on screen. What am I doing? See, I'm so out of it here. Somebody's texting me telling me that they're not on camera. Yeah, well, yeah. now they're on camera. Are you happy now? Okay. So, so <laughs> quality control. I, yeah. I, I'll give you the uh, the, the, the scenario. Mm -hmm. You stop somebody and they flee. You got to wonder why they're fleeing. Yeah, but Are you, they fleeing yeah. because they're black? I doubt it. Are they fleeing mm -hmm. because they're wanted by the police probably and are they fleeing because they're wanted by the police for some real serious crime they're probably not fleeing from the police because they forgot to pay a parking ticket or a traffic <clears throat> ticket or something like that they have a small warrant for their arrest mm -hmm. <clears throat> although it's happened but um so it's kind of the police's job to chase them down i mean that's that's you know, the idea is to, you know, arrest them and let them get before a judge and the judge makes it. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, look, in, in all your training, we're talking about South Carolina here. We're not talking about wherever, where was your police department? It was in... Yeah, in Fremont, California. Fremont, California. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, we're, we're not talking about Fremont, California. We're talking about, about South Carolina. In Fremont, California... You, if the guy started trying to get away, you might chase him or whatever, but you're not going to go shooting at his car and try and kill him, you know? No. No. And, and that's the difference. Yes. You know. So that's a good reason to not for me not to go to North Carolina. Yeah, cause, yeah right, because you're black. Yeah. Uh. No, I, 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 I've seen it firsthand. I, you know, I, I totally get that uh, yeah. black people are um, unfairly subjective subject sub subjective, subjective to to unfairness by the police right right anyway hello kathleen how are you this evening she's off i'm red. good how are you i bet if you raise those blinds we'd see the ocean out there right yeah yeah but then we wouldn't see how pretty she is no i know i know but look at this for a second look at that look oh, at that huh there you go. <laughs> I like how that wave is stuck there. That's a green screen. Yeah, that's a green screen. Yeah, You'll, much better. Yeah, you you uh, you. Did you know a cop named John Rossetti? Absolutely. 
I know his son, Elliot. Oh, I didn't know his son. I didn't know he had any sons. John was a big guy and a real go-getter. And he was a big white guy. And if anybody smarted off to him, they got an ass kicking. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we worked together. I knew him. That's funny. Hmm. <laughs> but small world. Anyway, hello, yeah. hello to John Larkin as well. He's here this evening. Um, hey. Yeah, I screwed up at the beginning of the show, folks. I'm sorry. It's just, it's one of the reasons I'm thinking about bringing this whole... By letting Phil in? This whole, no, this whole process <laughs> to... Bringing this whole process to an end is because I keep fucking up too much lately. Oh, you're doing fine. You know, I really, I, uh, you know, I mean, I should have had everybody's picture up here, but I'm just, I'm out of it today. You know, oh, tired so again. If you if you stop doing the show, I'm just gonna watch a rerun and pretend like I'm in here for an hour. Away from oh, okay. Table, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't say anything, please. <laughs> no, I had some sad news. Sad news this morning. What's that? So. Yeah, two of my, so I used to run all the manufacturing for like 16 years and, and two of my swing shift people left work mm -hmm. and I go down Lawrence Expressway and the cops were chasing somebody and they went through a red light and they hit my two co-workers and they killed them. What? Oh, no. oh my God. Wow. Yeah, this is in Sunnyvale. So uh, they had on the news and then they had on the news uh, an update today. But total senseless, you know, being chased by the police, and they went right through the red light, and they hit them and, and killed both of them. That's horrible. That's just so horrible. The, the people that were being chased by police hit the car that your coworkers were in. Exactly. They ran a red light and hit my coworkers that were driving yeah. them. Well, the, the police didn't run the light. No. The, the car that they were chasing ran the red light and hit right. my coworkers. Why were they chasing the car, do you know? No idea. They're, you know, and of course, you know, that person has injuries in the hospital and they're arrested. You know, well, sure. but it's unfortunate that they kill people. That happens. Well, what, aren't they, are, they, are they? Are they going to? Are they going to be charged with something here? With oh, uh, sure. well, I mean, charged with the actual accident as well. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Evading, it's a felony to evade the police to run from the police in this, the, the, in this the, state. These uh, and it, people, at the bare yeah. minimum, that. Yeah. And These people have. Lives, they might be charged they're, with they're, manslaughter. They're both under, and they're both under thirty years old. You know, uh, so. they'll, they'll be charged with manslaughter too. So, mm. at a bare minimum. So. That's terrible. That's terrible. Are they married? Do they have kids? Or no, no, nope. Just two young kids working their ass off, Jeez. making money, you know, and trying to do the best for their families. There. Oh, you know. that's really oh, wow. sad. Yeah, I, I knew one of them pretty close. So. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry and, for it. Made it through COVID, then they get hit by some stupid. Well, idiot. that you know, I saw there's this documentary this week on uh, Frontline, in which they go around the world during COVID and talk about people, and what went on with them with COVID. And there's this one couple down in uh, was it was it Brazil or or, or Bogota, Colombia, I think one one place or the other. I think maybe it was Brazil. And they're talking about their kid, and they said, you know, he was has such promise, and he was so important to us. And oh no, this is Kenya, Kenya, and the kid was so important. He had such promise. He was, uh, he, you know, he was musical, yeah. and he was, you know, he had a bright future ahead of him. And then he died. And you go, oh, my God, COVID, what a horrible thing. No, no. he was shot by the police. Yeah. And you go. I saw that. You know, so to survive COVID and then to get shot by somebody, is it's just bizarre, you know? So They have one show on Apple Plus called uh, The Year Earth Changed. Mm -hmm. It's coming up, I think. So I think they're going... They're going to like places like India that had all that pollution, and then after COVID, when nobody was driving, it all cleared up, and the connections. Oh the yeah, ranges. they. I think, I think uh, Richard up. Attenborough has a documentary about mm. wildlife during COVID, really? and how wildlife has changed in that it's become bolder. It's you know, it's come out. They've come out more, you know, because the streets are emptier. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what's that on? Do you know? It's on uh, Apple Plus. Oh, it is. I think that may be the thing you're talking about. Maybe, yeah. Uh, but India I, is like New York, is like um, uh, Los Angeles right now. They they can't they can't find oxygen. People are dying in the street trying to get into the hospitals. Their hospitals have always been substandard, 
and it's a real shame, but it's coming to home. Yeah. Coming home well, to don't home. you know that's all a hoax? They're all just lying to us. Yeah. None of this is real. No, it's mm -hmm. all, all, okay, it, Donald. I'm sure that's what Bill thinks. It, I don't think so. It was I as one so. preacher referred to it as the scamdemic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Did you see uh, what uh, Tucker Carlson said last night? Oh, I no, I never watched Tucker Carlson, but I can I, only I don't watch him either, but I saw clips of it. They were talking about it today on MSNBC. He said, and this is what he said. He goes, if you see on the streets any anybody with wearing a mask in public and or if you have kids you know somebody with kids call yeah. the police on them for for child abuse oh really yeah for yeah, wearing a yeah, fucking I mask that. Oh, i mean man. that guy will do anything for fucking ratings you know yeah. what were you what were you <laughs> talking to there schmoody was it my cat your cat <laughs> <laughs> I I'm love surprised. the side I'm, text. I'm surprised the cat isn't like there because what happens is it, 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 a lot of times when you're watching, you know, Zoom calls and stuff on shows and so on, always a cat will come along its tail going right in front of the screen like this. You know? <laughs> you know? So in the, in the side text, my favorite fan here, 14 year old Matt Crash, writes, who cares, Alan? That doesn't grant them a death warrant. Did I say that it was okay for them to kill no, them? No, you didn't. No? No, you didn't. Fucking idiot. Matt Crash is imagining what you're saying. Oh, shit. He just hates me. Yeah. But that's okay. It's good to have a hater. <laughs> you know, do, you know, 14. I, maybe I'm giving him too much credit. Maybe he's really only seven. There are 500 and what, 60,000 so far dead <laughs> from COVID uh, approximately, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, 573,000. 573,000 is more yeah, than really. I Ask Dr. Doom. He's the statistician here. We're going to hit 600,000 before this is over. Oh, definitely. But that means that I would imagine everybody knows somebody who died of coronavirus. I know two. You know two. How about anybody early, else here? Early on. Really? I, I don't know. I don't think I know anybody who has. I don't know anybody. You know? I don't. No. No. No one. There's so, a lot of people that don't. And that's how come they can believe it's a hoax. Right. Wait till their sister or father or mother dies from it. Then they'll realize it's not a hoax. Well, my, my wife's best friend, her parents, who still live in Russia, her, her mother came down with COVID, and her father-in-law, her, her stepfather came down with it, and he's in the hospital. Okay? So... I mean, it, it's just that you th hear these stories. I mean, I feel very lucky and very fortunate, knock on wood, that yeah. we were we just played it really safe. Absolutely. We didn't leave this house for mm. six months, something like that. You know, and you if know, we, we did, we if, were lucky. The ones of us that could stay home and work from home, or just yeah. stay home because we're retired or whatever. But the yeah. the people that got hit hard were the people that had to go out and work and that unfortunately is a lot of minorities yeah. latinos and black families mm -hmm. didn't have the money to sit around their ass they right. had to go out and work and be in crowds and they got hit hard and well also i'm i'm lucky i'm living f for free oddly enough in a 2500 square foot apartment <clears throat> you know we we could stay here and never get on each other's nerves Okay, uh, if we were downtown in my old one-bedroom apartment, we'd be strangling each other. But I mean, it it, um, it you know we were very lucky that way. But we were very careful, you know. And even today, you know, when the president said, "Hey, you can go out now in public, and you don't have to wear a mask if you're not getting with any big crowds or whatever." Yeah, that's what the CDC. Uh, I went said for a today. walk and I was a little more liberal with my bat mask being down, but when I came towards people, I put it back up. And I noticed, you know what's really funny today? The president says, "Oh, you know, you don't have to wear a mask." There were more people wearing masks today than I've seen before. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's like they should have done this from the beginning. Oh, don't wear masks and everybody go, "Well, I'm going to wear a mask." 
you know. But I thought that was only if you've been vaccinated. Yeah, but you know what? You know what? You know what? Really? Well, the vaccination has changed everything. I mean, am I worried out there? Not really, but you know, I'm I'm not going to take any chances. Why? I've gotten this far. I'm still alive. You know, we've gone over this. Being 95 percent means that one in 20 can still get COVID. Yeah, is, my, is my math right, Charlie? Yep. yep. So you still got to be careful while it's still spreading out. Well, I would just say to anybody who's been a doubter about it that, you know, come on. You know, the only way we're going to get past this is if everybody gets a shot. And, and I'm telling you, you're not going to catch anything from it, and it's not going to make you sterile, and it's not going to do... It, it's, it's Sterile's a lot better than dying of COVID. Sterile is better than yeah. dying of COVID, you know. But, uh, and I'm sure, you know, uh, Kathleen, you kept your son very carefully out of the fray so that he, yep. wouldn't, he wouldn't catch anything. <clears throat> Even though as a young person, he probably could survive it better than, say, you could, you know. The first wave, yes. Well, yeah. No. The uh, second I, wave is more transmissible to younger people. But I mean, you're over you're over fifty, so you're you know you're not yeah. as you're a little more susceptible. How old is your son, Kathy? And and I was working at Costco, but I was working at their chill freeze location in Tracy. So we we're in thirty eight degrees, and so when I got hired, I was part time, but never ever did I ever work under fifty hours. And by the time COVID hit, it was seventy two hours a week. <laughs> Really? Why was it seventy? Why did it suddenly go up under COVID? Because you did had less people. Because there? Costco, the hoarders, remember all oh, hell broke loose oh, yeah. at Costco. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There were the shelving up above. All those racks were empty. I took pictures of that. It's unbelievable. Never seen it before. I could never <laughs> figure that one out. Why is it? And then, it is toilet paper. No, it isn't <laughs> just this particular pandemic. It's floods. It's any number of things. Whenever they happen, people go out and they buy paper products like crazy. Well, you know, my son, because we were still living in Tracy and he was kind of freaked out. And I said, you know, I, I bought like eight months worth of food, but they're in these number 10 cans. This is in case, I mean, we live in earthquake country. And so um, my freezer was stocked. We were fine. And so Sean goes, well, what if we run out of water? I go, have you looked in the backyard? We have a big ass swimming pool. Yeah, but it's got chlorine. It's constantly got, circulating water. Yeah, he was kind of freaking out. Wait a minute, it's got chlorine in it, right? And urine yeah. and and, <laughs> and uh, fly, dead flies and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna drink water out of the pool. No, but you know that was <laughs> worst case scenario. He was overreacting. Yeah. I have. You know, I go to Costco and get process. 20 cases of water, and that way, because I'm in earthquake country too, mm -hmm. just for that reason. Yep. Well, you know, I had, I had a lot of masks when this first started because we're in forest fire area. And although the Bay Area doesn't get burned down very often, all the smoke loves to travel here. So you want to breathe. And so I had N95 masks when COVID started. Well, how fa how much did Costco keep the toilet paper and, and, and uh, paper products in stock? Or they, could they just not get them? Was that the problem? Well... I was in the wet depot, so everything I was dealing with, that we were dealing with in our building, was anything that needed to be frozen or refrigerated because we uh -huh. were running around in snowsuits. So mm -hmm. we had all the meat and vegetables and stuff like that. And twice we ran out of meat, and that was absolutely unheard of. But the dry depot next door, we just felt sorry for them because it was a constant battle with water and toilet paper. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, no, it was hard to get. But there were people yeah. buying it so that they could sell it at a higher oh, price to people when stupid. they could get it at the store. Was it uh, that, or was it that, that they, they, people were selling them on eBay? How how yeah. come those people aren't the really? people that get shot? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, here's no the thing, though. I, I would think that part of the reason why these this kind of thing happens uh, is that um, uh, there's a, there's a. a, a I, I can't, everybody says, oh, there's a run on toilet paper. So when they say that, there becomes a run on toilet paper. That's right. You know, or you know, there's a run you, on... Well, I better go buy some. Walmart, Walmart put out a statement and said most toilet paper is made, you know, is asked to be imported. Yeah. 
the toilet paper the toilet paper industry said that's bullshit. Most of it's made here in the United States. But part of it had to do with, uh, I mean, you, you wonder why um, uh, meat, for instance, had a problem. Why paper had a problem. And part of the problem is I think people got sick at the plants that produce yeah. this stuff. And I so they didn't have the people right. to produce this stuff. That's the problem. You know. Absolutely. Now I notice that Costco very rarely runs out of toilet paper or bounty paper yeah. towels no you can get yeah. you can get hand sanitizer by the gallon there are tons of it yeah in the beginning you couldn't get hand sanitizer to save your life i uh, i order i use it all the time before covid i ordered three gallons in january from walmart had it delivered in three weeks or a couple months later you couldn't find it anywhere wow so i was i was by 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 kind of by default just lucky you know do you I had think, masks, do you think, I had toilet paper, I had the yeah. ability to stay home. And I'm asking you all this, you know, because, it, it, you know, again, we always talk about COVID here, but there's a reason. It's the one thing that affects all our lives universally. There's none of us who are getting away from this. You're not going, oh, COVID, that happens to somebody else. You know, no, it, right. it happens to everybody. And we're mm -hmm. all involved in it in one way or another. I mean... The, the downside of COVID for me has been this fatigue I've been feeling. I'm always tired, always tired. And it's yep. because I haven't been out in a year. I mean, I yep. still, I go out now, I'm taking two mile walks every day to kind of try and get myself going again. Yep. But uh, even that kind of makes me a little woozy. But now that I don't have to wear the mask, it, it's a lot easier. But How did you feel after today's walk? Uh, oh, I felt okay. You know, I was still I was still lightheaded, you know, but you know, it's getting better. It's he passed out twice. Well, there's this, nice. this medicine I take, and I think it ha uh, I then don't take it some days, and I think it has like a half life with me, so that for several days afterwards, I still feel the effects of it, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it's you know, but you know, it it, it I think our lives are not going to be the same after all of this. You know, I think you're right. I, you know, I think it's pretty well changed forever. Um, <clears throat> yes, Jeff. I think a lot of thing that is going to change is a lot of people who used to work at a at a company, and now they've been working at home for so long that they're used to doing it. Right. And they don't want to come And back. you know something? The companies are beginning to find that these people have been doing a fine job from home, so why should we pay for the office space? Anymore? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. You, know? you know? Office space, parking, uh, janitorial, yep, toilet all paper, right. heating, air yeah. conditioning. And all that work is going to go away. Yeah. yeah. And your workers yeah. got to drive back and forth and take the risk of some guy that's running from the police. You know, I mean, it's... That's horrible. That's just horrible. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I don't know if you guys figure out how much gas you use in a car for a year, except for this last year. But you, it's true. Not much this, this last year. Well, I mean, Marjorie has been working from home, and she goes in now twice a week. Uh, and and I keep saying to her, do you get much more done going in than you could get done here? And she says, oh, there are a few things I have to do there that I've got the papers nearby and so on and so forth. And I said, yeah, but all that could be taken care of by moving those papers here. You know, I mean, why should her business pay $18,000 a month for, for office space, yeah. right, in Manhattan? When, quite frankly, she can do most of her work from home and so can all the other guys at the office, mm -hmm. you know? The only reason why I think some guys like to come into the office is so they don't have to get stuck at home because they've been stuck at home for a year, you know, mm -hmm. like Brian. Yeah. <laughs> like, Brian, did you work from home a lot? Did you work from home a lot? Don't tell anybody. No, I, I went in from 6.30 till about noontime and then I saw a break in my schedule and I came home for the rest of my meetings. Just oh. to be on a on a normal schedule to do something, because I know being here when they were homeschooled, it'd be tough. So, but now they they went to school started last Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. In person school. So, how does Adrian like that? Because she never she really is she's new to school, right? Yeah, she loves it. 
Yeah, she's so excited, and yeah. Because so, now yeah. she has friends she she's can talk to. Tired of with. her at-home teachers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has. She has. She sees her friends that she's been seeing online now, and the whole social thing. You know, the other two are social or they're not social. You know, they've already done that in their brain, but her, she's so you know open with everything still. So yeah, that's happy. So let's let's change topics here for a second. Um, uh, did any of you see the Oscars? No. Nope. I saw no. a little bit of it. I saw two seconds of it and turned it off. Well, you're all lucky. Yes. I, I watched it so I could talk about it. And then you people oh, no. didn't watch it, so now I can't talk about it. <laughs> can, we, can we go to a new subject? Yes. What a boring two, two hour, uh, three hours and 15 minute exercise that was. I mean, it was disgusting. I don't think I At seen least any you of got movies. a break to go take a shit, you know. It, well, you, you didn't have to. It, it, <laughs> Heard it, you talking to Phil. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't need to have a break to take a shit. You just took a shit and came back. The same guy was giving his acceptance speech. You know, they let him go forever. Wow. You know when they when they did the memoriam, you know. Oh yeah, they did it so like fast that. though. Yeah. Everybody boom, like, boom, 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 boom. I had to like stop it and say, wait a minute, let me see who that person was that died. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Why were they going so I'm fast? Pissed off because of so many people that they didn't do. Gone and, Wells from Gilligan's Island. She died last year. Okay, now here's what got me. One of the things that got me, and I mentioned this to Phil, that got me was uh, when they do them in memoriam. Who do they save for last? Probably the most important Chadwick. actor of yeah. the, of the group. Okay, of the people who died last year. So that, you know, if the year Elizabeth Taylor died, it was probably Elizabeth Taylor. And the year that, you know, yeah. somebody else died was them. So now you've got the two final people there were Sean Connery and Chadwick Boseman. Which one Sean. was more important? Sean Connery's Sean Connery. got the biggest, yeah. who do you yeah. th Who do you think was last? Chadwick Boseman. Oh really? yeah, never even heard of him. Well, <laughs> never heard of him. What? <laughs> what? Do you live in a in a in a in a cocoon? Well, he was somewhere? only like forty one, so he yeah. Well, been... I mean, yeah, but is that a reason to to put him last? You know, I mean, no. if you want to talk about career achievement and a big motion picture star and somebody who had an impact on the movie industry oh, for yeah. over forty years, I, I it would I'll be Sean Connery. Him. Yeah, but I think they were thinking that he might win the Oscar, so you know, you'd want to put him last. If well, you that was the Oscar. I mentioned that with Phil that the yeah. where they really screwed up is usually Best Picture is the last category yep. in yeah. the show, yeah. and this year Steven Soderbergh decided to make it third from the end. So you would what? then do yes. Yeah, so they then did Best Actress and then Best Actor. And the reason they did that is they figured Chadwick Boseman would win and then the wife would get up and give this big, you know, cry in your eyes speech and 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 all of that and then they would end the show on this this really dramatic moment. Instead, Anthony Hopkins won and he didn't even show up. He wasn't even not, there. Not only did he not show up, he didn't even get near a satellite dish so he could Say do his acceptance speech. They just had a, a, a his uh, his eight by ten glossy oh. up there, oh and God. they said, uh, and uh, we'll accept on his behalf. Thank you, everybody. Good night. And it was like it ended like. So I guess we believe the Oscars. They really don't know who wins. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, that's the ultimate. Thing. Yeah, but somehow you know uh, Steven Soderbergh, who wanted to make this work like a movie, figured if he changed that up and then Chadwick Boseman wins and we do this big ending and everybody's sobbing and crying and everything. But no, it was Anthony Hopkins who didn't even show up. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, and then, uh, who, who, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Did he always sneeze like that? And you I couldn't know. even see the movie. And do here. I always sneeze like that, Kathleen? Yes. I've sneezed like that for how many years now? Forever. I've gotten a little better because Marjorie has always given me a bad time about it, so I try to be a little more verbose 
in my sneeze. But here, I don't want to sneeze because I'm doing the show, so I hold it back. I, go, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I hate when something flies out and gets on the camera. But anyway, anyway, so, so I, um, uh, uh, so I mean, it it was it was it was just this horrible clusterfuck, and then well, then they finish the show off. You know, usually you have some kind of host who goes, "Well, thank you for being here tonight." And it probably should have been Regina King who started off the show, but she didn't come back to say goodbye. All right, she she must live in a no. Cave. You know who said Regina's goodbye? Uh, what Quest Love? You know who Quest Love is. Yeah. The guy with the with the Drummer with the, with, the black eyed peas. Uh, who wears the uh, the afro pick in his hair? Yeah, yeah. Oh god. Um, uh, he says thanks for being here tonight because he was the disc jockey running the music. I mean, it was just oh it was god. horrible. It, it was, was just pathetic. ghastly. Uh, it's, it's um, you know, it t- movies are different now. You know, the movie business is so different now with streaming and everything. Well, no, but it's different by virtue uh, again. We go back to COVID. Yeah, it's COVID. You know, these are movies that that would not have been seen. Well, net, these Netflix movies and so on would have been been there, but they wouldn't have had the emphasis put on them that they've had put on them today because there would have been more of an industry out there. Uh, I mean, so a lot of bigger films might have been released, but they're holding back on a lot of this stuff, you know, so it's uh, it's weird. It's really weird. Um, so the other question I wanted to ask you is, uh, what kind of job, how good a job do you think Biden is doing? Or how bad a job do you think Biden is doing? What kind of job do you think Biden is doing so far? Because he has... Do all, make, yeah. uh, huh? vaccines mandatory? Making vaccines mandatory? I don't think yeah. he can do that. I don't think he can do that. Maybe if, this maybe well, if in Canada where 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 you are you know you you're all uh, uh, so condescending to everybody about everything. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I that's like okay. what, but down he, here he they wouldn't job. put up with that. You can't do that. You can't tell people they have to get a vaccine. You can't force them to take medicine. Yeah, yeah. but did you hear what Virginia, the governor of Virginia, said? I'll give you a hundred bucks. If you come and take... Yeah, he wants to give $100 to everybody who gets a vaccine. And my feeling is, fuck you, you don't want the vaccine, go ahead, die. Okay? You know, yeah. but why am I going to pay you $100 to take the goddamn vaccine? Well, there was that, there's that private school in Florida mm-hmm. that says that, that the owner of that place said that he won't hire... Right. Uh, Teachers oh, fire who get the vaccine, yeah. or he'll he fire a, any fire, teacher that's been uh, vaccinated people. has to leave. <laughs> yeah, no, people, anybody who's been vaccinated cannot yeah, work at goes, his school. Because she doesn't want anybody around the kids that's been vaccinated. Yeah. Him? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? I know yeah, it's exactly it's, it's reverse thinking, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like too much Fox News. But I was thinking about it the other day, and I feel Biden's doing a perfectly fine job. You know, he's doing a great job. He's yeah. trying to he's trying to fix impressive. all the things that got broken by Trump. You know, yeah. And I don't think we're looking for somebody who's going to make a huge splash and and waves and all the stuff. Do the stuff that's important, the stuff that he's committing to. Vaccine is the number one thing right now to get everybody safe, and then he's got to move on to the next things. You know, but a lot of focus has to be to to get everybody healthy again. Uh, yeah. Plus, he's also handling some of the uh, stuff from out of the United States, and he seems to be able to communicate with all kinds of people from China and whatever. And he's not getting along too well Trump with Russia. Never do anything. He's not getting along too well with Russia, though. No, but that's, that's huh? a choice. Because he's not Good. kissing there. Putin's ass. Well, that's the point. <laughs> You know, he yeah. does, is not going to get along. You're not going to get along with Putin unless you kiss his ass. Okay? So, and that's not something Joe's willing to do. Joe's going, hey, you want to do things right? Play ball with us and we'll be fine. We'll all get along just fine. But we're mm. not going to sit around putting up with crap like, you know, involving yourself in our elections and so on and so forth. 
I like the fact that they knocked out, what, a dozen people who were Russian and said, out of the country. Yeah, we yeah. threw them out of here. Yeah. yeah. So, Kathleen, uh, uh, how, how is it up in Gualala now? Do you find that you're still in the loop and you know everything that's going on, or do you find that day by day you're becoming a little remote from everything else because you're kind of living in the country, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the coast, but... Um... Like, if I want to see what's going on in Tracy, I just look on Tracy Rants and Raves. I can see what's going on. And most of my, um, you know, friends and acquaintances live in mm. Tracy. Did you so sell the house in Tracy? I own it. I rented it out. Oh, you're renting it out. Oh, now yeah. you're a renter. Oh, that's got to be a delight. Yeah. Well, the faucet's actually, leaking. I, I have a friend of mine, her and her two kids are in there, and so it's being very well taken care oh, of. Oh, okay. That's the best. Yeah. Uh, all right. Because yeah. uh, in, under normal conditions, you know, every time the faucet starts leaking, you're the one they call. You know, we got a leak. They're basically moved into a brand new house. I had the whole thing redone. Really? Yeah, well, it's close to 30 years old. You know, you're right. I remember when you first bought that thing. Wasn't it brand new when you bought it? No, when I it was built in 91, so when I got it, when I bought it, it was eight years old. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I got I, it for when, nothing. The last time I saw her physically, she hadn't even had a kid yet. Yeah, because you moved in 03. I moved in where? 03. Oh, um, 03, you moved to New York. I moved to New York, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you had your kid when? 05, November. 05, see? And now she's got a teenage boy. Yep. Now and that means that means uh, something like I haven't seen her in a long time, or I'm getting fucking old. Yep. <laughs> By that. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. I'm catching up. You're catching up, are you? <laughs> and only only 20 more years, and I'll be your age if I survive that long. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. Gee, there's nothing. There's nothing really to bitch about right now. Uh. Well, the the uh, the um, Democrats are going to ban uh, hamburgers. What? Oh, that's complete BS. Oh, it is. Yeah. Come on, oh, that I, was I, 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 I heard it on Fox. I thought it was real. Oh, they're going to ban hamburgers? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They You're were referencing. They were referencing a, a, a study that was done while Trump was president. It had nothing to do right. with Biden's proposal. I think this is Tucker Carlson and his mind wandering again. Yeah. Well, they're they... watching too much Fox lately, John. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish I wish liberals were guilty of everything they say we're guilty of, but unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. we're we're not that guilty of those things, and um, I would like to think we were, you know, just to piss the Republicans off. Yeah. I, I don't know. I go over to Fox and I watch them, and it's like I'm going into uh, you know Bizarro World. <laughs> you know, it's a whole different way of thinking and a, a mindset. You wonder if they're on the same planet that you're on, right? Well, it's like whenever I see a clip of Tucker Carlson, which you know, here's the problem: MSNBC loves to show clips of Tucker Carlson and then rail against him. And quite frankly, if I were running MSNBC, I would say you do not run clips of the competition. You know, you I just like ig you just MSNBC you just either. you just ignore them, okay? Yeah. That mm -hmm. way, you disembowel them. But if you every night you're every day you're going up and saying, "See what Tucker Carlson said last night?" Everybody goes, "Gee, Tucker Carlson must be important." Oh, yeah. oh, kitty! Oh, kitty! Oh, he's a good girl. Oh, yeah. How old's that kitty? How, how old? Uh, how... She'll be nine. Oh, okay. in October. Okay, because I I didn't want to I didn't want. How long did cats live? I don't. I've never owned one. About twenty well, years. It yeah, because it all my cats are strictly indoor. If it's an wow. indoor cat, I mean, if, if I I had a cat that lived to be nineteen. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? My parents' yeah, cat would be seventeen. Yeah, so he I probably mean, gave it some Jewish name or something. Yeah, dogs don't last as long. No, dogs are good for what about twelve years, thirteen years? 
That's how long ours lasted. Yeah. Bigger dogs die sooner than yeah. smaller dogs for some reason. You get a little chihuahua, they'll last 20 years. Well, here's yeah. what happens with cats that I've found, is that if they make it past five years, then they'll live long. Yeah. Okay, but they got to get past that five-year point. There's something that happens at five where that could, you know, cause What was your cat's name that lived that long? Shabbos. Sure. Oh, Shabbos. A Jewish yep. name, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, well, it wasn't Shabbos. No. What was it? No, it was, yeah, it was Shabbos. Yeah, it yeah. was Shabbos. One of the My mind, I'm, was I'm, good. yeah, it was Shabbos. And I had another one called Yanta, and that was a female. And uh, that means, that means holiday. You, know? you, you wonder, you wonder why. In the 80s and 90s, Richmond, California had such a crime rate. It's because every time Phil went to a call, if somebody ran, he got back in the car and drank his coffee. He never <laughs> chased anybody. I heard them say that, and I'm like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> That's not I, the way most Richmond cops are, believe me. But I uh, lived in Richmond in 89, 90. Really? Chancellor Avenue. Chandler Avenue. Yeah. Chancellor? Chandler. Yeah. Yeah, I know where that's at. Yep. Well, how long yeah. were you a cop? Oh, me. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, for uh, 21 years. Something 21 like that. years. Yeah. 22 years. So you get a retirement now, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's a career cop. Yeah. And, no, that, and, that, no, and that's no, fuck no. you money because the real money he has is the money he inherited. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. That's why I got you to stay home and gain weight. Career? <clears throat> What'd no, you say, Charlie? Just, you know, I can't really remember, Charlie. I got to tell you, my mind's going. <laughs> Maybe it was 18 or 19. Fuck, I don't really remember. Could have been five. I don't know. I can't remember back that far. Yeah. Well, you know. It was it was between 10 and 20. We'll say that. That's a good number. I don't know. By the way, do you think... I'll have an answer for you tomorrow. I, I don't want to mention the name Trump, but I'm going to mention the name Trump. Do you Who? think he has any cachet now, or do you think he's kind of through? Well, he's still got a lot of people kissing his ass, so I They got people got kissing up. his ass, but that's not the point, you know? Uh, does he have any cachet? There we go. The guy's going to poach here. He's coming in here yeah. like a fisherman to grab people. Oh yeah, here comes here he comes to 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 beg and plead that all you people will stick around and call him. Well, God, if he'd get on Zoom, I would. But uh, Irv, you've got to you, Irv, uh, Jack. <laughs> well, he it says Irv Jackson there, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's can there. He's now his audio is connected. Can you hear us? Ooh. There you go. Or uh, yes. you know, the man. I got to tell you something. Zoom is the oh, easiest man. thing in the world to use. Well, I had my sixteen-year-old uh, friend come by, and he said, "Golly, Mr. Bishop, I'd stay and show you how to use this thing, but I got to go home and wash my dad's car." Yeah. How come? We, how come we? It doesn't sound like we're hearing your mic. We're hearing the sound coming from somebody where well, else. Well, hold on. That's my fault. Let me uh, let me plug up here. <clears throat> See, I plug. Talk amongst yourselves, as, they, as we used to say hey, in high school. Out. I'll tell you, you slow the show down more than the guy from Norway. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> That's good. You know, as we say down here in Texas, fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Oh. <laughs> hey, did you guys know Johnny Morris? Johnny I. I knew Johnny Morris very well. He, who, who, who's Johnny uh, Morris? Who's Johnny, Johnny Morris, Morris was a jock at uh, well at uh, KDIA. Oh yeah, in, I, I, uh, I didn't know of the guy, but you know I knew some other people at KDIA. Oh, who did you know at KDIA? Uh, what's your I didn't name? I think you slummed that much. No, yeah. no, uh, there were a lot of people working. That was with... good. That had a double Dutch bus and. And Sugar Hill Gang, all those songs that the us whiteies couldn't hear, so we could turn into KDIA. Well, there was a there was a black woman. I'm trying to remember her name now. Yes. Then went on to become a newswoman. Jeannie Blevins. No, no, uh, but uh, I uh, I I used to uh, know some of the people over at KDIA back well, in KDIA the KDIA was uh, in black radio. There were 
there were two great companies to work for. Unfortunately, back when I was black, I didn't work at either one. <clears throat> I always wound up at, at Equal <laughs> Opportunity Plantations. But there was a company called Sonderling, and they, yes. owned, they owned KDIA in the Bay Area and WDIA in Memphis, which was the first radio station to be programmed to a black audience on a 24-hour basis. All by the way, I'm, I'm sorry, by the way, that I brought up radio because now, now Jack will just do uh, nothing but talk I, about radio. I, no, likes, I wanted to talk Johnny, about cats. No, no, John, Johnny Morris was so my one of my close friends in high school. I never knew that, but that's... Oh, you we, went to... Did you go to Poly? Uh, no, I went to Sequoia. Oh, okay. I'll, 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 give, I'll give you a name. Morris. I'll give you a name yeah, from those Morris old days. His, his daughter is in L.A. as a DJ, and we were close, close friends in school, so... I'll yeah. give you a, a name from the old days, Don Barksdale. Oh, great guy, great yeah. guy. He was the, he he was at uh, KDIA before it was KDIA. <laughs> what was it then? I cannot <laughs> remember the call. Morse code. I mean, that's <laughs> all. <laughs> no, the call letters didn't change to uh, KDIA until sometime in the fifties. But I'll I'll bring up a, na a name there uh, that uh, you might remember. Alex, and mm -hmm. that was George Oxford. Jumping, Jumping George forward. Oxford, yeah. Yeah. He was a white guy. He was a white guy. Yeah, white guy in a black station. Well, that's not unusual. Uh, you know, I worked across the street, <coughs> excuse me, at KSOL, and at one time, both of the drive time jocks, morning drive and afternoon drive, were white guys. Huh. See? Huh. Mike, Michael Erickson was with... Uh, what was he with uh, KML okay. or one of those? Well, I'm, I'm sure. And every time we heard him, we thought he was black, but he was white. I'm sure we're losing <laughs> listeners now. This is not. Who, uh, who was yeah, that guy like... that just died this week? And it was a obit in the New York Times. Oh, oh, guy... Bob Fass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob yeah. Fass. Bob Fass was a uh, was a was kind of a legend in New York. I mean, he was a he w he worked on uh, Pacifica Station uh, here in New York. And did a show for 40 years, maybe, something like that, maybe more, Jeez. called uh, Radio Unnameable. And um, uh, he, was, uh, he, was, he was special. He was special. Um, more special, special than team. Alex Bennett? Well, I'd like to think Alex Bennett was the most special person ever to hit broadcasting. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Yes, okay. Jack. Well, if we're going to talk about people that died in, uh, this weekend in broadcasting, we had perhaps the most famous legend of Dallas radio to die over the weekend, Ron Chapman, who, mm -hmm. when he got out of music radio, he went to work for ABC, and for a short while, he replaced um, uh, Paul Harvey with the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. and he died this weekend at 85. Really? Wow. And, wow. and my wife, <clears throat> she worked at the same radio station that... Uh, he worked at, owned by, uh, let me think, uh, owned by Westwood One. And I, didn't Mal Carmazan run that for, for a while? Westwood One? I, I believe so. Yeah. Well, she was in the business office. No, uh, no, no, no. He ran Infinity. He ran Infinity. Yeah, Infinity. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was Infinity. But and, I, uh, I don't like getting into radio stories. You love doing radio stories. No, I don't. No, I you really do. You about really about do. how long cats live. My, I had a cat <laughs> named Rocky that lived for... 20 years. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> yeah, and uh, this cat was so smart, he single-handedly trained three people in this house to turn the water on the way he wanted it turned off. It, wow. It was amazing. Do you How want to know the, smart, the smartest cat? cat? <laughs> the smartest cat I ever met was my ex-girlfriend's mm -hmm. cat. And I had to babysit the cat because she and her mother went to Greece or something. So after I was through with my show, I would immediately go over to the East Bay and do my afternoon nap at That's their place. Pretty. Oh boy! Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Jeff, yeah, Jeff, Jeff hocking up lunch. Check on him. Is Jeff still alive? Uh, it, he hasn't come back yet. The, um, the time to set your mic to. To, to, to off yeah yeah anyway no the point was that what happened was i would go over there to sleep and one day i'm i'm 
there was a, her cat kept wanting Siamese cat kept wanting to come into the room, and I would l close the door and lock the you know close the latch a little bit, not lock it, but you know. And the cat knew how to open the damn goddamn door. Wow. And we just pull on the, the thing, and the, the door would open, and here would come the cat, right? So now I'm trying to sleep, all right? I'm trying to sleep. And as I'm trying to go to sleep, all of a sudden, her clock radio goes off. And I turn over, and I go, why that clock radio turn on? So I turn it off. And I go back to sleep again, and I'm lying there, and the clock goes off again. And I look over, and the cat is sitting on top of the radio. <laughs> and I turn the radio off, and the cat sits there and moves his foot around till he finds the right spot and turns the radio on again. Wow. I finally had to, like, just chain the door closed. Yes, Jack. Our cat, Rocky, the one that lived 20 years, uh, yeah. he learned how to open doors, Yeah. how to turn on taps. Yeah. And how to turn on the electric blanket on our bed. Really? And wow. and, and, and Rock <laughs> Rock was a voyeur. Rock would figure out how to open the bedroom door whenever Donna and I were doing the headboard boogie. Yeah. Yeah. Well I had I had uh, about uh, five cats. And one time when I was when I was I was I was having sex and this woman was making some noise and so on. And all of a sudden, I look up, and all the cats are lined up across the pillows, <laughs> yeah. watching us. And I imagine them also holding up little cards that went nine, seven, four. <laughs> Amazing. Cats love oh, to watch people having sex. Quickly, tell them about your show, Jack. Oh, yeah, let me get out of here. Uh, do a show called The Intersection. We do it on Skype. Really? Get... Yeah. Oh, shit. We do it on, hey. on you, said, you broke my thought. You broke it. Uh, we do it on Skype at GabNet Live, and we're going to one day, hopefully next week, be on Zoom for you Zoomers. It is, has hey, Jeff survived? Hey, hey, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Because when Jeff drops in, the IQ of my panel goes up about 50%. Oh, that, that's for, re for real. Wow. That yeah. says a lot, Charlie, you know? Wow. Yeah. Okay. You know, Jeff, are you okay? You oh, yeah. I'm just, and hacking and yeah. I'm just dying anyway. We got to say goodbye to Jack because he's got to go do his show. So yeah. bye, Jack. Bye, See Jack. You on Zoom soon. Good night, wherever <laughs> you are. You know, there can be a lot more people on Zoom too than on on uh, yeah. Skype. Yeah. And also, let us know uh, what the address is so we can put it up on the website. Yeah, I got to talk to you about that. Yeah, figure, yeah, figure out yeah. what address to use. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jack. Good night, Mr. Bennett, Good wherever night. you are. And uh, by the way, I got to start night, playing Jack. the theme here because, uh, 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 you know, it's it's all over. You know, you never forget that part when to turn the theme on. <laughs> well, I, think, I, you, I think you're just fine. I'm really good at that. Mm -hmm. You but, are. But, and by the way, you have a tattoo there, uh, Schmoody. You got that since I knew you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Looks oh, wow. nice. Looks really? nice. Uh, uh, Brian, thank you. Oh, Appreciate uh, it. Uh, 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 of course, Alan, thank you. Mm -hmm. Jack, uh, 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 oh boy. Jeff, thank you so much. Charlie, thank you. Kathleen, always a pleasure having you here. You know, what else have you got to do up there in Gualala but call us? Please keep it up. <laughs> Same thing with you, you, John Larkin, and always good to have uh, Trucker Steve. Uh, in the mix. Everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a wave, big <laughs> wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just uh, unceremoniously hang up on them. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the, uh, with the intersection and he'll be taking your calls on Skype with the uh, call letters uh, GabNet Live. Just type in GabNet Live and you will be able to talk to him. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow night. We have a sports show at uh, 8.30 called uh, The Arena with the franchise MC, And then I'll be back again here at, uh, well, at, uh, at uh, 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, 
wear a mask out there. And if you don't want to wear a mask, then get the in, in, in vaccination, right? Okay? See you again tomorrow. Have a nice night, everybody.